Good morning. I got a canoe strapped to my roof. I think I'm officially Canadian now. ACDC on the radio. I hope all the, the noises around are not too loud. Um, yeah, so it's the first time I make one of those car GoPro videos. I guess I'm a grown up now, so I can do that too. Um, actually, quite practical. Probably shaking a little bit. Sorry. Um, this is just basically strapped somehow to my mirror. Yeah, so. Um, Try not to go through too many holes so you guys don't constantly shake like that. Um, we're heading out to Kawartha Highlands in central Ontario. Um, buddy of mine, actually a customer who ordered a custom axe sheath for a nice felling axe from the Toronto blacksmith. And again, I'm sorry for the shaking. I don't have any kind of super fancy setup here. Um, yeah, so a buddy of mine, actually a customer, uh, invited me to go out for a overnighter or possibly two night out um, canoe trip Whoops. in the Kawartha Highlands. Um, it's a nice provincial park, actually apparently the biggest provincial park south of Algonquin Park in, um, in uh, Ontario. It was actually only established um, Probably 25, 26 years ago, so um, it's quite a new one. Yeah, so what's up? Um, I'm bringing some of my canoe paddles. Situation is that I'm gonna be alone in the canoe. The other guys are gonna be doing a tandem canoe. Um, the first day in is gonna be 10K. Wow! 10 kilometers um, in order to get to a lake where they actually stock some trout because trout is in season and fishing is gonna be a major part of our um, trip and that's gonna be awesome because I just got my license set up and I have my little traveling rod and um, I've got some got me a nice kit of baits and I'm excited and um, of course I gotta do a little video on the on the water before we head out I'm um, going through my gear a little bit as like every avid woodsman an experienced camper I've got a um, insane amount of cutting tools, axes and knives and uh, a minor amount of everything else. No. Um, I'm not really having a lot of camping gear here. Um, of course, as you guys, prob guys probably know, I'm, I'm in Canada only for a year. Crafting here full time, um, it's an awesome uh, environment for this kind of stuff. So yeah. Um, I was trying to get a minor amount of gear together from friends and uh, I was really fortunate to have some buddies here who have some stuff. I'm uh, gonna be doing hammock camping, I've never done it before. Um, this is actually my first camping out in the in the Canadian woods. There is a, a really big amount of dead porcupines on the roads here. It's very unfortunate, like sometimes I'm trying to gather some quills, um, but it's bad because they're big. Um, some of them are quite big and like, it's actually very, very sad. I never like seeing that. Sometimes, I'm, last time we had a turkey, dead turkey, when I was in the Weetong Ojibwe territory um, where I was um, crafting some spoons and doing some demonstrations and um, somebody brought a turkey over and we tried to scavenge some, some feathers from the poor thing. Um, but anyway, you gotta be prepared for like even freezing temperatures. It's some... Um, the 30th of April, by the way, um, it's a Saturday. Um, I'm just saying because I really don't know when this video is gonna air. And um, so we're preparing for minus two degrees or something. It's very, very chilly at night. Um, there was actually one main reason why I didn't even know if I wanna go. Because um, after all, I have my very packed work weeks and um, my job is not exactly um, sitting at a desk or something so um, and working for yourself as you, most of you guys probably know like, if you don't work you don't eat to over a little bit but anyway so um, but when you do hammock camping of course you're gonna prepare for like a lot of um, wind passing 
underneath your hammock and that's not only the case if you had chili for dinner but just in general it's getting pretty chilly um, from underneath so I'm trying to sorry guys I'm trying to insulate well and um, yeah for, for everybody who's gonna comment here this is gonna this is very very shaky sorry this is literally trapped strapped to my car and there's nothing holding it in, in balance the whole time and then um, we are ending up at Sucker Lake um, and I hope Sucker Lake is not gonna I'm not gonna say that I'm not gonna make a joke about it sucking because it's just bad um yeah I think um, anything else is gonna be on the water I'm, I'm stoked to actually load up the canoe properly to um, do, do the solo canoeing thing I've been solo canoeing a lot lately um, with an I met Becky Mason in, at the Ottawa Outdoor Adventure Show um, I really wanted to, to give her a spoon so I gave her a little travel spoon and she was really happy and we had a great talk and about the paddles and she's just a she's just a legend her dad is a legend for me a little um, happy camper from from Austria these things that just always seem so far away and now they're so close and it's just amazing. So I got, I got a DVD for her, a signed um, DVD, um, her solo canoeing um, advanced and beginner and advanced series is absolutely amazing. It's um, like you watch it a few times, you're going out on the water trying out some stuff and it's just amazing. So I got very, very confident even alone in the canoe, even on a lake with currents and with wind. Um, these things just really teach you to to be confident on the water and yeah so I guess it's enough um, waffling from my side guys I was just talking about those porcupines eh? and I've seen some marks of porcupines before but I've never actually seen a porcupine alive so I'm just driving down this road talking about dead porcupines and there, look at this guy. Sitting up there like a little monkey. I don't know how well you can see him. But he's just sitting up there in a tree like a little monkey. Look at him. Hey buddy, you planning on crossing that road later? Oh, sorry guys, with the GoPro I can't really zoom in, this is the best I can do. He's a tiny guy, small one. Hey buddy. I'm trying to sit still now. Crazy, my first porcupine. It's getting you dark. When lights close the tide, you heard the light. I'll soon be with you, my love. Give you my dawn surprise. Beautiful bird, eh? Hey, before we go into the gear check, just a quick disclaimer. Um, since this was my first canoe trip in Canada and uh, my first actually overnighter in a canoe um, and I didn't have all the, the best gear and stuff at the time um, since my trip situation in, in Canada and everything I just wanted to make sure you guys understand this is not of course what I would bring now anymore on a trip but I just wanted to check some stuff out and wanted to have fun so I still wanted to share my gear with you um, by the way um, the problem not having a food barrel on this trip we overcame with a good with the good old method of getting our stuff out of the reach um, of all kind of possible critters and um, yeah um, a kettle was provided as well by a friend of mine so I also had of course a metal container that I was able to um, sterilize water and get it drinkable in case I needed to so um, just wanted to make sure you guys um, don't feel like this is um, the best gear or the most professional but for an overnighter I think it's pretty decent and as um, 
the videos coming out of the other trips, you're going to see that a lot of things have changed. So thanks for watching, folks. Hey, folks. So this is gonna, where we're going to launch into um, Kachakoma Lake. My buddies are not here yet, so I can actually go through the gear. This is just a 14 feet prospector style like really beat up canoe but it has served me well it's extremely heavy so i'm not totally looking forward to the um portage but i guess it's just going to be a little bit of a challenge that's always great um i usually i got this um all-in-one um, safety kit from canadian tire um this is mandatory in in canada to have this flotation rope your PFD, of course, um, a water resistant flashlight, your whistle, and um, what else is in there? I think that's it. Oh, this is the baler. Yeah, of course, this is the baler bucket. So I just chose to um, use some shock cord and just um, put it into the canoe like that. Yeah, 14 feet. It's um, not that I'm alone actually on this trip. That's actually pretty good length. Um, I'm planning on positioning my gear right around here just in front of the center thwart and behind the, the front seat um, yeah so in order to have just I'll probably even gonna distribute it throughout the canoe to have it um, nice and level in the water so guys I just want to go over like quickly over the stuff that I that, I've, that I'm bringing I guess it's always interesting to, to see this is my first canoe trip here in Canada and actually my first canoe overnighter um, ever and I guess I learned a lot from other YouTube videos and I just probably have too much gear for an overnighter but <clears throat> um, one reason for that is I really want to check out how some of the gear performs okay I just switched to another mode so it's not as fish eye um, over here I just gonna like there's no really chronological order I guess I just gonna go from left to right i'm um, not everything is packed in yet some of the stuff still needs to be packed into my bag and other stuff i'm gonna rip out just in order to show you guys um over here we have a nice um sleeping bag that has its comfort zone down to zero degrees it's not small the one i have in austria is definitely like smaller to pack and it actually has got um a lower rating as well but um that's one of the advantages about canoe camping you just can bring a lot of gear if you don't have to portage too much so i didn't really worry about it this time um over here we have um a very very nice hammock i got from um from a buddy for the trip sorry for this um it's a hennessy hammock um it's a very very interesting design and you're gonna gonna see some footage of that later this isolation mat here is gonna um, go into the hammock at night and I try to keep it underneath me. Um, then, of course, we have the PFD here. It's a cheap PFD from Canadian Tire, but it's it's decent. Um, I didn't like the camo so much, but it was cheap and didn't really have much money to spend on on anything fancy. So I just um, took some of my orange leather paint and just got some orange accents on it um, in order to be visible because it's important. Um, just some socks. Yeah, I haven't packed them yet out here. But for at night, um, these are very heavily made like it made in Newfoundland um Newfoundland um heavy socks for the night so down here there's something that still goes into my pack it's a small first aid kit there's already a first aid kit um kit in my backpack then of course some orange paracord um that's gonna come in handy kind of always um, I actually needed to tie down use it um part of it to tie down the canoe on the roof um then uh, we have a little cattle here got from a buddy for this trip and um, we cooked already in the in the woods with these uh, extremely comfortable and easy to use gsi outdoors um this is a little camping stove very very handy very easy to pack um yeah so i got a little small pan up in my my bag that i'm gonna show you Here's my, one of my custom gear fobs that I make um, with the solid brass steering. This one actually happens to have a copper rivet. And um, just in case you're wondering, don't put your finger into a bandsaw. So um, I just clipped one of my dad's um, 
35 year old carabiners to it and um the reason why i uh, by the way this is um this is what i carry every day by the way this is just the way i carry my keys um portable duct tape dispenser and the reason why <coughs> excuse me bring my keys that way on me it's pretty simple um when i have this on me and not in my bag or anything else um, and I need to have the keys in order to lock the car, of course. Um, in case something happens and I go for a little bath and my gear as well, this is at least on me. So it might seem weird to you guys that I'm actually carrying my keys in the woods, but it's actually the safest um, to keep them on your person um, in order not to lose them. It might sound weird, but it's just how it is. My phones, um, yeah, it's shitty. I don't, I don't think I'm even gonna have um um reception up there but this is my canadian phone and um in case i have reception this is an emergency tool that's what it is um and my phone my iphone makes half decent pictures that's gonna go into this video later so yep sorry for that but they're gonna come here's some of the um the cutting tools i'm bringing yeah it's far too much but i just really want to experiment a little bit with gear um a leatherman what is that? A wingman that I just recently got. Extremely happy with it. Using it every single day. Has a pocket clip. Pocket, my pocket knife goes into my right pocket. This thing is always in my left pocket. Um, comes in handy when I just do my leather work every day and all kind of stuff. Don't want to miss it anymore. Spring assistant pliers. Yeah, what can I say? It's not one hand openable. Why are not all manufacturers in every single model coming with spring assisted pliers? If there is a reason for it and I don't know, please um, tell me guys, but I really don't understand. This is one of my new ferro rods. I'm actually testing those out. Um, they are made in Austria, not in China. They're three eighths of an inch, which is nearly a centimeter thick. Um, they're coming from my home country, Austria, from Treibacher AG. Um, definitely step up in quality. It's a little bit more pricey, but um, the quality and the overall, um, well, I guess just the feeling of having something produced under um, certain work conditions is just making me feel better getting those. They're more expensive for me to buy, and um, I have um, a lot with handles already. This is just my personal one that I quickly throw into my pocket every single day. Um, but yeah, they're coming out with very fancy handles too. Um, yeah. What can I say? My Thrunite T10 always with me, every single day. Probably best value um, EDC flashlight you can get. Extremely happy with it. Battery lasts a long time. Um, just something like a like a body that's always with me, and I I'm using for kitchen chores all the time. Is my um, 65 Ben Hogan pattern by GEC, Great Eastern Cutlery, always in my pocket, very, very slim line, great kitchen knife. What can I say? Um, I always have a modern folder and a traditional folders, uh, folder in my pocket. Bring it, bringing out the other um, folding knife that I'm carrying on me every single day at the moment is my paramilitary 2 that I finally committed to a few months ago absolutely amazing knife um, needed to grow on me i was always a spyderco fan for the obvious reasons extremely high quality materials er ergonomic like nothing else completely thought through designs great materials but this particular um model needed to grow on me for a few years Bought one for a buddy a few years back, um, police guy, he carries it every single day and the screw on me and um, replaced my orange Enduro, partially. Then of course, um, my moral companion with a custom kydex sheath, the orange lanyard is going to go through here in a few seconds, strop the living thing out of it in the morning, um, this is my neck knife, um, this went onto the belt sander for a moment in order to get a nice rounded sharp spine on the back because they don't come with a 90 degree sharp spine so this is striking ferrots like nothing else 
one of my custom knives one of the first ones that's why it's not so fancy um, just a small puko style bushcraft knife with a nice patina on it U handle nothing fancy a few years actually this one is a, is a couple of years old um, made a very very simple dangler system just with a with a rifle button um, yeah this is just something that's on my hip all the time um, one of my custom belts nice heavy custom belt in a chestnut brown English bridle with a distressed copper yeah so I just wanted to bring one of a little bit of my my gear in here because this is what I'm wearing every single day and what I'm putting a lot of thought and high quality materials in so why not bring it into one of my videos um, I don't do you need any description for this um, this is one of my custom made um, handmade papers that I'm yeah um so what else do we have um one of my japanese hand dyed um rags that i got in japan this is great for protecting my neck when i burn like crazy because i'm albino and um i'm burning in about 30 seconds on an average sunny day um one of my cookses my personal one little um whale tail cookser of course completely hand carved with an X and a crook knife, a hook knife, and um, just a little deer toggle, that's how it goes from my belt. Everything should dangle for me, like on my belts everything dangles, because when I'm sitting down in the canoe I don't really need any sharp corners in my in my um, my hip. Um, little smoking kit, one of my um, briar pipes, um, some frogmorton on the bayou, little bit of whatever this is I think some cherry tobacco and they go into one of my hand stitched buffalo sami pouches this is taking long guys sorry um, rain jacket I bring water into the woods um, it's silly but I don't want to waste any time or like use any time on like disinfecting water so I just bring the water I'm canoeing anyways um, there's just some more food that goes still in the pack some eggs for tomorrow morning some instant coffee another thing I don't want to waste time on is like going super crazy on, on, on coffee making and just some cider for tonight for like sitting um, two of my custom-made canoe paddles some um, both completely hand carved with an axe um, draw knife and crook knife no power tools no sandpaper this one is a possum aquatic style paddle big blade propelling me forward very well alone in a canoe even on a windy um, day with a lot of current and this one is one of my earlier otter tail paddles as well with a flat neck grip um, for northward stroke um, and yeah the feather the handle of course is not fatiguing you as much gives you more surface more um, more estate like more um, purchase for your hands so you don't fatigue and they're of course oiled and hot wax and they're not varnished um, because varnish is in my opinion the biggest crap you can do for a paddle it's hard to repair um, makes the paddle extremely slippery so it fatigues and blisters your hands and all kind of reasons um yeah so what else we've got my nice um Hudson's Bay style blanket, vintage blanket from the 50s. Um, very, very nice quality. Still in great condition, looks nearly like new. That goes to the bottom of my pack. Then um, we've got a nice um, travel fishing rod, light trout spinning rod. I got last year in California from Bass Pro Shop and I just put together a little spin fishing kit here. Easy to bring. The reel is on one side of my my backpack here uh, nice flugor um, reel I really really like this reel it's it's, uh, it's um, not cheap but it's inexpensive I guess I can say very high value my gear belt this is getting very elaborate you guys my gear belt um, another custom belt made by me it's already a little bit beat up with a cobra buckle 
a very important cobra buckle also made in austria this thing holds apparently 18,000 pounds of force uh, but i guess me or the leather will give in first but the great thing about these like i make them with leather they usually come with nylon webbing which i don't like so i adapted them for leather which is not that easy but um i found a way to do it and um so they i just um size them up and down and in winter i just like clip it over my coat or my parka whatever i'm wearing and uh, in summer i just size it down and i clip it as well like very easily over my stuff really great setup heavy tooling leather beat up already pretty much but i'm used already for quite a while um my tajima japanese folding saw and a custom made sheath of course um this is a brain tanned leather bag i use for tinder and on the other side here we have one of my carving axes but the least fancy one so this is what i use for the woods at the moment um this is my one of my um refurbished axes it's a french axe head very nice steel takes a beautiful edge um, milk paint handle and I just of course made a custom X sheath for it that goes onto my belt it a while ago okay so last but not least and I hope really guys that you're enjoying watching this um, this is one of my buddies like I said a custom of mine um, this is basically the X sheath that I'm bringing him today um, this is a custom made and custom tooled axe sheath made by Woodsman's Finest. Who's that guy? And he wanted to have a D ring on the back, so there's a solid brass D ring. Um, hand stitched, of course, entirely hand tooled. It's got a nice set of copper rivets, hand riveted, of course. Um, yeah, so that's the custom. Axe sheath. Hey guys, and now just quickly to my pack. Um, I showed it in the last video already. It's a um, it's a paratrooper by um, Tasmanian Tiger, um, sister brand of Tatanka, German amazing brand. Um, here down here is my midi and like morning kit. It's just got the toothbrush. Of course, the sunscreen that I'm gonna put on now because I'm already pretty much medium done. Um, yeah, of course, some um, more um, stuff like disinfection stuff, something against bruises, um, more tape, a safety blanket, and in here is um, my trusty um, Endura, Spider Endura in bright safety orange, um, nicely oiled, of course, and um, of course, kept extremely sharp. So, this is my rescue knife for the trip. Um, has never let me down having this knife for several years now probably um, for the value probably for the value this is the best bigger size EDC knife you can get it even has a slight drop point sheep foot so you don't cut stuff if you're like cutting along a surface or skin it doesn't cut in this is so thought through um, great average or like very decent it's got a great decent steel what can i say and this compartment here is ideal for all your safety stuff or like your midi kit so this extra small midi kit goes in here so the next compartment I've got this rubber stuff on here I put them um, mostly paracord on all my zippers to find them easier when it's dark to grab them easier next compartment um, there's actually a few pipe cleaners in here that I'm gonna be using um, this is an awesome rechargeable um, headlight by um, by LED Lancer with an Aku and this is the sorry guys what a mess uh, and this is the through night archer 2 av2 tactical flashlight 
what an amazing flashlight as well running with two triple a batteries if i'm not mistaken um absolutely amazing always in here and that's the nice thing about this pack you can really organize it in those compartments very very easily the top compartment is just the greatest mess of all times there's all kind of stuff in there there's some extra leather gear there's a hook knife in there because we might do some spoon carving etc etc um they have this heavy um handles on the side so you can actually use them you can transport a person with it it's basically safety grips uh, i have a strop in here my slide strop custom slide strop they're gonna be um stocked up in my etsy shop very soon again because a lot of people request them recently and yeah the main compartment of this crazy pack is huge and opens up extremely nicely even further down than that but i don't want to rip it open that much it has two compartments here on the on the um flap basically or the, the piece that's falling down um there's my underwear in here and there is a lot of merino underwear in here so there's like some extra socks and there's some um, a icebreaker merino um pants and um shirt down here for the night um a nice um fleece hoodie there's some more thermal gear i have a um a down jacket down here there is my food in here which is just mainly apples um, a piece of meat for tonight um, a pan some of my spoons and of course there is um my um my beanie in there and it should keep me snug tonight although i'm hammock camping i'm pretty i'm um, confident that all of this stuff is gonna keep me warm and i got enough insulation with me so Sorry guys, this was um, really taking longer than than expected, but I guess that some of you really appreciate those um, gear checks, so you get a little bit of an idea what what um, other people pack and what exactly it does and why and everything. And from here on, I actually would like to explain less and um, just um, have lots of um, pictures from canoeing and like some some canoe techniques and setting up the camp and just more um yeah like overall impressions thank you for watching so far guys and um bear with me the best part is still to come cheers